Good afternoon. My name is David Gallo. I'm the head of the AIFC Academy of Law. We are broadcasting today from Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. And we welcome all of you from the Central Asian states as well as across the globe. We also would like to welcome our guest speaker today, who I will introduce formally momentarily, Professor Marty Menant, who is calling in from Spain. So first and foremost, we at the AISC Academy of Law wish you all are well, staying safe, and as we collectively manage through this unprecedented crisis, uh, staying positive and certainly staying engaged in our professions. So hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel here shortly, but we are very pleased at the Academy to continue to provide valuable education services based on the tech tools that we have, which is relevant and somewhat serendipitous because our topic today is on a very interesting aspect of legal technology. I'm especially excited about this. When we think about our goals and objectives at the Academy of Law, we're attempting to prepare lawyers and other legal professionals for international commercial law practice. Well, there's a lot of things happening. There are a lot of developments in the legal world. Businesses have been global for a long time. The practice of law has been global for a long time. And we need to make sure that legal education is keeping pace with these trends and developments. Legal tech is a very interesting topic. It's transforming the industry. And that's what today's speaker is going to talk about. But legal tech can be broadly defined. So let's be a little bit specific about what we mean uh, in the context of today's discussion. Well, there are technology tools that have evolved and are continuing to evolve that will streamline and fundamentally change the practice of law itself. Uh, these are efficiency related tools, things that lawyers will need to get a handle on and utilize to be competitive in their industry. Then there's another aspect of legal tech that's a little bit more esoteric. And that would be, what are the new legal issues and the risks that are created by new technologies. And we can think of several examples, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, um, financial crimes that, are, that could arise from digital transformation dynamics in terms of data breach, data privacy, and so forth. So there are legal issues that are arising and there are regulatory schemes that are attempting to catch up with how to deal with those new issues. Well, there's a third category. Now, I thought there were only two, but there's a third. And Professor uh, Marty Manant, our speaker, is going to provide his insights on another angle on legal tech. And that is, who will lead the legal industry in this decade? Not only lawyers are going to own this industry, but outsiders are arriving and more will come. So this is an interesting perspective. With that, uh, I'm going to formally introduce our speaker. Professor Marty Manant is a pioneer entrepreneur in legal tech. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's a founder and CEO of Derico.com, which is an alternative legal service provider with more than 350,000 online customers in Spain, Portugal, and Ireland. Professor Manant is also the founder and CEO of El Abogado, a leading legal marketplace in Spain. Marty is the co-director of the Master in Legal Tech program at IE Law School. This is one of the top law schools in the world, very much a progressive, trend-setting uh, legal education institution. He's a professor of law. He also has served as a certified data protection officer and as gen general counsel at several digital companies. Um, prior to this, uh, Professor Manant worked as an attorney at uh, a the Spanish office of the Arthur Anderson firm. So with that, let me hand over the floor to Professor Marty Manant. Thank you. Professor, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, hello from Barcelona, Spain. Uh, and it's a pleasure to talk to the Central Asian of Afghanistan. It's a pleasure for me today being here and also talking 
with you and also about one of the things that I, I love, that is the legal entrepreneur and these all things that I think that it's, it's amazing. And I'm very happy to live uh, these years because we are in a part of the history of the herd that is changing a lot of things and, and we can be part of it. And for me, it's, it's exciting. Debbie, thank you for your introduction. Um, my presentation, uh, my background, uh, you have been already explained it. I just want to focus that I have been doing practice the law uh, the last century, but since 2000, I uh, leave the general practice and I start uh, doing my own companies uh, with uh, some success, with some failures and learning a lot. And also I'm a professor in the Yellow School and that is very interesting because from the last 10 years I have been directing a program that is called Legal Bridge to Silicon Valley that, that, that uh, permitted me to be in Silicon Valley once a year and talking with the industry that is working there, with entrepreneurs, with the lawyers that are uh, doing their practice there in, in Silicon Valley. And that brings me like a, a big scope of what is going on and something about the future of the, the legal industry. Also, I'm an entrepreneur. I have incorporated more than 10 companies and I also an investor. Okay, the first thing is probably that I want just to you just think about, we are talking about the legal industry. And the legal sector, the legal firms, the lawyers, we are in industry. And the first thing that I've seen is that when I talk with some of my colleagues and I say, well, yeah, we are in the industry, my colleagues from the law school or from my, when I was studying, they say, we are in the industry. Yeah, you as a lawyer, you as a law firm, you as a legal department, you are a legal professor, we are in the industry. And we must realize that like other industries, the technology is impacting us, the transformation of the business is impacting us, and also the public is impacting us. And then we must think our profession or industry as a whole. It's not only like, okay, we are a law firm, but we are a legal department. And that is one thing that is very interesting because that is the first reaction from a lawyer I have seen like, wow, we are not an industry, we are like professional. Yeah, yeah, okay, you are a professional inside an industry that is changing and is evolving. Where we are, we are in a pre and post COVID 19, and we must understand that that um, difficult reality will change and is already changing. And where will impact? The first thing is that the technology that is already impacting the digital industry will accelerate it, the COVID-19 will accelerate that transformation. And on the, my point of view, we have made a jump like the three or five years ahead in just two months, and I will explain why. The second thing is that management. As an industry, we will, we will have new approach to management. And I think that that is very relevant for lawyers because probably we have learned how to practice law, how to apply code, but probably we haven't received any class about management. And it's very, very relevant. And I will explain why it's very relevant management for the legal industry. And the third is the entrepreneurs. Because as an industry, people from outside or game is jumping inside because they see opportunities. And I will explain how they are impacting our business. First of all, what is happening now? Okay, in a survey, 87% uh, uh, of the law firms are working remotely. And okay, could you just imagine that three or four months ago, nobody will say yes, no. And then I want to point that in just two or three months, all the legal industry have to make a jump three or five years forward. Why? Because to continue operating, we must work digital and we must work remotely. Second, legal professionals who believe cloud technology is necessary for survive more than 
80%. I will repeat, three or four months. Before, nobody would say that. We have professionals who believe technology is more important now. 70%. Okay, now lawyers realize one thing that I have been explaining the last 20 years. That technology is impacting our business. Technology is impacting our industry. And I will explain how. And probably now, a lot of lawyers understand that if you don't have the right technology, if you don't know how to use the correct technology, you have a problem. I used to make a joke that probably some one of you will understand that in some law firms, there is the partner and he or she has a secretary or an assistant to send the emails. The partner write or just tell what the, what is the content of email and an assistant sends the email. And probably some one of you have seen that, that the partner, he don't know how to send an email and that's real. Then imagine in the next two or three or five years, there will be lawyers that they don't know how to make a query in a database. Yeah, I will repeat. In three or four years, there will be lawyers that they don't know how to make a query in a database of um, some legal documents. And they will need the systems of a junior or an assistant. And it's the same like an email. Then the legal professionals have understand that the technology is important and is impacting for industry. And the ending is that the coronavirus, the COVID-19, will impact. And the pandemic will continue to impact. And that is just not just one or three or four more. That will impact because the customers and the lawyers have discovered that the new way to work that could be more efficient is working dramatically. OK, I have explained that we have three areas. And I will focus in these three areas and how technology management and entrepreneurs are impacting the legal industry and how they are changing it. The first thing is technology. If we know the correct tools, if we know the correct technology, we have superpowers. Yeah, if you don't have know the correct tools to work, if you don't know the correct technology that applies to your job, to your ordinary and daily work, you don't have the superpowers. And you must realize that there are a lot of lawyers that already know these tools. I will explain in a few minutes which are these tools. Then, remember this, the technology could help you and could give you superpowers to work. Okay. Where technology is impacting? Technology, I will explain that technology impacts in the daily work. And for me, these are tools. That is not high technology. Meetings. We are doing digital meetings to Zoom, Google Meet, Hangouts, or Teams. These are tools that probably a lot of lawyers just two or three months ago didn't know that these tools exist or they didn't know how to use it. But now, for consequence of the COVID, they know how to use it. Documents, digital documents with Office, oh sorry, there is a, a tool, it's a 316 Google suit on DocuSign, for example. Now you work on the cloud. Communication is obvious. We are using a video conference and a lot of law firms are using a communication tools like Slack. It's a new way to communicate and commercial. How you're gonna get lawyer, uh, new customers if you are at home and you cannot go to visit them. And this is affecting all the world. And then the commercial part of a law firm or a lawyer is changing. They only can make video conference calls or what we have seen that the lawyers are reaching new customers online from their website, from marketplace, and also for the commercial, they are using what is called a customer relationship management tool. That is 
a very helpful tool. Management. We are going to see management tools, and we are going to see how the technology could uh, help, for example, an in, uh, a legal department of a company manage their case and their legal work. And that is one area that is very, very relevant. And also billing. Billing is like a new billing system. Like you can make online payments, subscriptions, and these tools already exist. This is not like the state of the art of the, of the technology. These are tools that the lawyers that know how they uh, to use all of them, we can say that they have like superpowers because they can work more effectively. Because you must understand that the customers, they will not pay for anything that don't add value. The customers, they will not pay for anything that doesn't add value. And then, for example, moving papers, that doesn't add value. Reviewing documents, like one page to another, that can be done by a robot. Then the customers, they don't will pay for this. Then if you don't use the right technology for work, for your daily day work, you have a problem. Because it's going to be someone more efficient that will do that work. And here I want to introduce that the, the knowledge of the law, the knowledge of the case, under my point of view, and what I am seeing in industry, the knowledge is a commodity. And that is very relevant. The knowledge, how to solve the 80% of the cases, it's a commodity. What does it mean? A commodity is a thing that you just have it and you don't realize from which company it's providing you. For example, the power, it's just you don't know who is providing your power. You don't check the trademark of the power at your home or at your office. That's it, that is a commodity. And under my point of view, what I'm saying is that the, the legal knowledge, the legal service is becoming a commodity. And then if your work is becoming a commodity, What's happening here? That if you don't use technology to provide in a more efficient way, you're going to lose. And someone is going to take that part of your business. Then here for me, the picture is all these technologies in meeting, documents, communication, commercial, management, or billing already exist. And what I suggest is the more efficient law firms and lawyers are using it. Then I also want to explain my experience uh, in Silicon Valley and in the entrepreneurial industry from the last 20 years. And what I see is that all the entrepreneurs do the same with technology. All the entrepreneurs use the same technology. And for example, ask yourself if you want to ask some of these entrepreneurs like the Airbnb entrepreneur, the, El the Uber entrepreneur, the first uh, DocuSign entrepreneurs, all those entrepreneurs, which kind of digital tools they are using. And I know this, and it's very easy. They are using these tools. Email, they use email. They don't use Outlook. Docs, they use Google Docs. They don't use Office. To manage their work, they use Asana, Trello, and to communicate, they use Slack. And to have meetings, they use uh, Hangout, or they use Zoom. If you find an entrepreneur in Silicon Valley or in Europe, which tool they first use, they use these tools. And probably some, from some of you, for your daily day work, you will just use Outlook from Microsoft. That's not bad. But I just want to explain which kind of tools the more effective or impacting entrepreneurs are using. And they're using these digital tools. Then, there are law firms using these tools, absolutely. There are law firms at legal departments of companies using these uh, tools to work, absolutely. They don't use Outlook, they use email, they don't lose, use Office, uh, they use Google Docs, or Asana or Trello or Slack to communicate. It's a day, daily day. And I will explain a case where a very relevant uh, litigation lawyer and where they use Google Docs in a few minutes. Okay, 
the key providers in technology and legal business, if you know these tools, you could be, play better the game. If you use the right tools to work, you could be more effective. And you must understand that these tools evolve. And every two, three, or four years, these tools change. Then it's your responsibility for your work to learn these tools. 100 years ago, you just need to know how to write and how to use documents, and that's it. Now, every two or three years, you must understand which are the new tools that could be more efficient for your work. I have been explaining the technology that could help you your daily day work, and how this technology that I have been explaining the last probably 10 or 20 years, that it's changing how the the most efficient law firms and the most efficient inside legal departments are working, it's very easy. You just need to learn how. But then there is another kind of technology. This other kind of technology is what uh, is the technology that is impacting what we are calling the legal tech. It's, what, it's, the, it's the basis or, or the most relevant new change in technology that is affecting how the, the legal work will be done. And what I will explain is what is called the state of the art. The state of the art of the technology is where we are right now to understand what is the situation of the technology all around the world and what can be done with this, this technology. We'll understand what is the state of the art. The state of the art, for example, if we are talking about the last century, the big revolution was the PC and the internet. And the PC plus internet becomes the search, the website, the e-commerce, the social from the, the PC. The next jump, and here we can understand which companies become here. For example, Google, uh, Yahoo, uh, Amazon, all these companies come from this big change in technology. The second big change was mobile. Okay, we have PC plus internet and then mobile. And when we talk about mobile, we talk, are talking about the, the smartphone. And with the smartphones, we have the, the new communication tools that could be WhatsApp, that could be uh, whatever are using in your continent. And these are the new revolution. PC internet is a base technology, mobile is a base technology, and then at the top of this, you can make new business, you can make new service. And what we have here is search for PC, website, e-commerce. When we have mobile, we have ride shading, we have Instagram, Instacar, and all these new services are built at the top of this technology, okay? And where we are right now? Right now, we are in what it's called the blockchain, the, ma the machine learning, but I will spend some minutes to explain to you what does it mean, because it's very easy to talk about the big data, machine learning, but first of all, we need to understand what is this. Okay, right now, it's very cheap to stretch and to keep information. Now, it's very cheap to stretch and to keep a lot of information. It's very easy to contract a server on the cloud and to put there an amazing numbers of documents and terabytes and terabytes of information. And this is very cheap. This is the first big change. Keeping a huge amount of information is cheap. This plus that processing this information also is very cheap provides a new state of the art of the technology. And with these new tools that existed like 20 years ago, but were very, very expensive, and only some official departments would have these kind of tools that keep a lot of information and processing a lot of data, now it's very cheap. And what does it mean? That means that you can build new solutions the first one is what, what, we talk, what we talk is big data. That you have a lot of data and it's very simple to keep and to manage. That is big data. 
And when you use big data and you use a new solution of technology that it's called machine learning, artificial intelligence, that can bring new solutions. And I will explain what is machine learning. Machine learning is a new technology that you don't explain to the software. When we talk about technology, you must understand software, code. That we don't teach the software each step of a process. What you teach is in a different way. Let's explain. Probably some of you uh, used to know Deep Blue. Deep Blue was uh, a software developed by IBM that wants Kasparov playing cheese. Then, uh, how they make this software? They make this software explaining all the possibilities of a movement of the game. Machine learning is different. You don't explain all the movements. What do you do is you show to the software some how the people is playing the game. And the machine, simple. By then, they understand how to play and how to win. You don't explain all the rules. You just explain the basic, and then you show some games, and the software learn by their own. That happened some years ago, and um, with a game that it's Go that come from China, and a software developed by a company from UK that then was bought by Google, that it's AlphaGo. That software, without teaching them how to play, they learn by themselves how to win playing Go. That was a big neck jump. Also, you can see that, for example, in a, when, when you have a, a car that is a self-driving car, that the cars just go by their own, it's the same. That the car is keeping a lot of information from the cameras. It's just storing all this information. And there is a, a chip that is processing this information very, very quick. And they decide how to move the car. Now. Also, you can understand that that kind of software can be applied in the law sector. For example, discovering trends, discovering documents, discovering new uh, evidences. And if you want to learn a little bit more and where we are in the state of the technology that is changing all the sectors, but also in the, the, the legal sector, you could read about more about TensorFlow. Here, there is a big fight between IBM, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, that these four companies, they have their own software that you can use online. Yes, you can use their software online. From Google, it's called TensorFlow. From uh, IBM, it's called Watson. From Amazon, you can search this in the Amazon Cloud. Um, and Microsoft, they also have their own solution. This is where we are. And with this technology, also, we have the blockchain. What is blockchain? Like blockchain, it's a chain of blocks. It's very simple. You can imagine a, a T, T, uh, TXT document. And if you put that TXT document link it, that is the blockchain. And this a distributed database that it's a very strong system to provide like a resistance. This is technology. And you can apply this technology for a, a large things, like, for example, safe driving cars, for example, if you apply this for a cryptocurrency or whatever. But that is the technology. And I want to explain when we are talking about legal tech where we are. For example, if you come to me and say, I want to develop a website that the people want to come and see, okay, I will say, okay, if you are a law firm, you must have a website probably. But this is not like the state of the art of the revolution of the legal tech. And if you come to me that, okay, I want to provide a new kind of registry for inside my corporation that a registry that tracks all the documents that they cannot be changed, you, and you explain to me that you want to use a blockchain open source, yes, I would say, yeah, wow, that's, that's it's a great solution. Then it's very important where we are, and we are here in the revolution of the big data plus blockchain. And from this big technology, there's going to come a lot, a lot of new solutions. The first thing is technology. The second thing that is impacting the legal industry is management. Probably some one of you know Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio is the founder of Bridgewater Associate, that it's the world's largest hate farm. Okay, this guy runs probably one of the largest 
hedge funds of the world that is called Bridgewater Associates. And what he says is excellent execution make the difference in companies. And after my years of experience creating companies, investing in companies, and knowing what is going on in Silicon Valley and in the European entrepreneurial ecosystem, I can see that everyone can have an idea. Everyone could have the next idea about what we want to do. But the difference is execution. I will repeat, every one of us could have the idea of the new law firm. But what makes a difference is execution. If you do or not, and if you do in an excellent way. Then, you must understand the legal industry as an industry, and then we have management. And we know how to manage the company. And probably what could be very interesting is knowing which is the methodology, what kind of management systems these technology companies from Silicon Valley, these entrepreneurs from the United States, and these entrepreneurs from Europe, that, I, that they are making an amazing companies, an amazing startup that also are disrupting the legal sector, how they manage their company. And if we could learn something that we can bring this knowledge to the legal industries and to inside or law firm or inside or law departments. I want to share a history. I don't know if you see the, the face of this guy. He's John Doerr. John Doerr did a presentation to explain a management methodology to a startup that he just invested almost 12 million for the 12 percent. Okay, could you imagine in 1999 this guy investing 12 million of dollars for the 12 percent of the company? He explained that he was the biggest investment that he was doing. He was getting the 12 percent of the company and he just asked one thing to this company. He asked, okay, I will invest this money. Thank you for letting me invest in your company. But I just would ask one thing, that I want to teach you to explain a methodology that I was using that is very interesting. And I suggest in you, the startup, to use this, thing, not this methodology. This methodology is called Objective Care Result. This guy, John Doerr, was investing the 12%. And I, am, I will explain to you that this new startup that was in 99, the last century, they adopt this methodology. This startup was Google. This startup was Google, and this is Larry Page, the co-founder of Google, and this is John Doerr. And Google adopted the Objective Care Result Management Methodology, explained by John Doerr. Then, what happened if I also explain to you that Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all these companies are using the same methodology to manage their business. That is objective care result. Probably we must learn this methodology to manage a law firm or a legal department. Because if these companies like Amazon are Banishing their business with this methodology, why we cannot apply this methodology to a legal department or to a law firm? Then it's very relevant to understand that management makes the difference. That management and execution make the difference. If any one of you want to learn more about this methodology, I will suggest a book that is called High Output Management. High Output Management by Andy Grove, that was the 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 manager of John Doerr in Intel, at Intel, okay? High output management by Andy Grove. Technology, management plus the entrepreneurs. Okay, the legal industry is suffering a big change these years, but it's very easy now to explain because we are in the middle of the COVID and we all understand that if we don't use technology, we cannot continue operating our business. And also, we might, must understand that execution, how we manage our business, it's, it's the key factor of success. And we must understand that there is people from outside our industry that they are watching us 
and they are realizing that they are part of our industry that they are not effective. And probably with technology entrepreneurs, they can make it more active and taking part of this industry from themselves. And I just, here there are some examples, LegalZoom, Rocket Lawyer, DocuSign, Carta, Clerky, Gust, Atlas. These are legal tech companies that already exist. For example, Rocket Lawyer is, uh, is one of his investors is Google Ventures. DocuSign is, the, is a, a public company, the public market. And in, if you go to their office in San Francisco, where I have been, I have been uh, sometimes, they explain to you that when someone is using DocuSign to sign a document, almost 98% of the document are signed in less than one hour. Could you imagine this happening with papers? That first you need to print the paper, put in an envelope, call the guy who's gonna bring that, that's crazy. Then these companies that are providing service in legal uh, industry, they are taking part of the, of the business from the lawyers. Some examples, for example, Atlas. Atlas is a subsidy of a Stripe. A Stripe is one of the largest uh, payment systems that use uh, all the, the, the tools that you are paying online, a lot they use Stripe. And Stripe realized that a lot of entrepreneurs that they are creating their business, they don't already have the company incorporated. They are guys from just their room. And they provide the service with Atlas that you can incorporate a company in Delaware, in the US, in a very cheap and effective way. There are a lot of examples in the legal industry that have been disrupted from these startups. There are a lot, a lot. In each country, in each country, there are examples of the legal tech companies that, that are doing more effective some of the part of the work of the lawyers. Then we must ask ourselves if the job that we are doing can be done more effectively and digital from some of these new startups. The technology and the entrepreneurs are changing the, le the legal industry. Absolutely. DocuSign, management signature, is a legal company. And it's amazing. There are a lot of examples of, of uh, document signing companies all around the world. And now with the COVID, they are using a lot of this. Google, I explained to you that I want to explain an example. Once I meet the, the head of litigation of Google in San Francisco, and he's a guy that is managing all the claims when Google has someone who uses Google. He's managing all the staff. He's the head of claims. He's the head of these big problems from Google. And I asked him, which kind of software do you use to manage your documents? And he's absolutely saying, okay, Google Docs. That is how we work. We don't use Office. But could you imagine a litigator using Google Docs, and, and he explained it to me that, Marti, it's absolutely necessary because we can use inside Google Docs what is an, a script. I will show you the script here, I will move my, okay. This is, a, this is a tab when you are using Google Docs that you can have the code. And for example, you can program and you can make some small routines to check documents to search for certain information. And she explained to me that absolutely, you need to use the scripts inside the documents to manage all of this. Also, where is applying all the legal tech companies in automatization? It's absolutely needed because this work is probably where you don't add value. And if you don't add value, your customers are gonna run out, are gonna go away from you. Then where you can apply for automatization, contracts, document review, due diligence, trademark research, tax, in a lot of legal business areas. Legal management tools. I strongly recommend that if you don't use any tool to manage your work, probably you are not efficient. And I would recommend to check and use one of these. Asana is one of them, Trello is another, and there are a lot of new companies that are providing management tools. Just to end, remember, the legal industry is being disrupted 
a needs being concurred for the technology, for the new management methodologies, and for the entrepreneur. And if we lawyers, we don't realize that, in a few years, the most relevant part of this industry will not belong to lawyers, will belong to people from outside this industry that probably will say that it's the industry already. Thank you very much. This is my presentation, and I hope that helps you to bring to you a new view, a new vision of what is going on, that it's not the future, it's the present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Manand. Um, can you hear me okay, Professor? Yep, perfectly. Okay, let me see if I can. Pop now, back. yeah, now it's a Q&A session. Any one of you that have, would that want to discuss with me, have any question or have any comment, just welcome and I will answer. Excellent. Uh, for the participants, at the bottom of the, your screen is an icon with a hand. If you have a question, activate that icon and my colleague Almas will call on you individually and you can ask Professor Manant a question. So please, uh, we really welcome any questions from the audience. Well, it appears we have no questions. Anybody at all? Uh, I will suggest one, one question, David, that a lot of people like is asking me is, okay, lawyers, we need to learn how to, to cope. And the answer is going to be, okay, how many of you know how to speak English or how to speak another language? Code is, is just a tool. It's not the objective, it's a tool. And I have seen a lot of lawyers learning how to, to code. Could you imagine the cage, the lawyer who is, who is managing the, the mergers and acquisition of HP? Okay, probably an, uh, all of us know HP, held it packet. Could you imagine the lawyer who is managing the mergers and acquisition from HP? He's doing like probably 16, uh, 70 uh, acquisitions per year and the amount of these acquisitions go from some millions, from some thousand millions, a lot of money. And he explained me three years ago that he has learned how to code Python. Python is a language. And that Python is helping him and his department to manage information and making more efficient their work. Then one question, question that rises a lot of time here is that lawyers, we need to know how to code. Okay, not all of us know how to code. Probably some of us, but could help them work, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Manant, do we have an issue from uh, Nurjan? Uh, I, I will turn on his mic. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Professor Manant, uh, I have a question. So, uh, what do you think uh, exactly legal tech uh, sphere is developing, developing because of uh, the current situation with pandemia of coronavirus or uh, just uh, uh, evolution of what we have? Yeah, I think that a lot of lawyers and the legal industry, they don't realize like three months ago that the technology could really help the world. Now, what I have seen that it's all the law firms must understand how to work remotely and how to work on the cloud and that it's technology. And a lot of partners that they decide in the law firms that is they decide where to invest the money they have realized that if, if they don't invest in technology, probably in the next big issue, they're gonna die. Because their law firms or their law department, they won't be efficient. I have seen a lot of examples these days that just in a few weeks, some of the most relevant law firms in the United States and also in Europe have developed some technology tool that we can talk like that it's a legal tech tool 
to help their clients, their customers, to be more efficient to solve legal problems related to the COVID. Then the, the, the COVID pandemic, under my point of view, is just a factor to accelerate the technology and the digitalization of the industry, of the legal industry. And from this point, a lot of legal tech companies will have and receive money investment because now a lot of investors, they understand that it's a very good place to invest. And here I, I want to, to point and thank you for your question because some of the biggest funds and VCs in, in, the, in Silicon Valley, they had already investing in legal tech companies. And that is very relevant because if the big players that they have a lot of money, they are putting money inside the legal tech company, that means that the legal tech, it's, it's a player of, of the digital industry. Okay, thank you. Uh, second issue is from Almas Yerikola. Almas, please. Thank you, Almas. Hello, Marty. Nice to see you again. Um, thank you for covering in your presentation several important points on the, of the future of the legal industry. Um, as technology has been playing uh, a key role in our lives, do you expect that outsiders, I mean, non-lawyers, will enter the legal market and start providing legal services soon? And my second question, uh, as professor at EU Law School, can you please let us know uh, whether you offer any subjects on or courses on coding or programming for lawyers? Thank you. Okay, the first question is if people from outside the legal sector is already playing here? Absolutely. Yes, for example, uh, there are a lot of legal tech companies that they are not uh, created by a lawyer. DocuSign is not created by a lawyer. DocuSign is created by a real estate agent that was very complicated for him to manage the legal documents, to sign documents. And a real estate agent incorporates DocuSign. And they, they keep or take part of this part of the industry. And there are, for example, in, in Europe, there are some companies that they just make a small claim, for example, when a, a plane is delayed or for, when a plane loses your, your baggage or whatever, that it's just one or two hundred uh, dollars. Okay. That is a lot of amount, uh, a lot of money for one individual, but that is not a big case for a law firm. And here, uh, people that they are not lawyers, they have created companies that they just take these claims and they make a lot of money with these thousands and thousands and thousands of claims, of small claims. This is already happening. And I, I want to point that we are not talking about the future. We are talking about the present. The present is today because there are a lot of companies not created by lawyers that they are taking part of the legal industry. And why is that happening? Because under my point of view, lawyers, we don't get, uh, we are not teaching about business and we are not teaching about management. And we, we don't receive, we receive probably a great teaching about the law and the code and the case. But also we need to learn this uh, capabilities, we, we need to understand how to manage business. And the second part of, of the question, if we take how to code, yes, we, 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 we teach code, but we teach code in the way to help lawyers to use tools, for example. We teach, uh, we teach uh, how to use TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the solution from Google uh, to use machine learning. And how you, for example, you can take two or three thousand uh, documents, you can give to TensorFlow these documents and TensorFlow to discover which of these documents are relevant for your problem. And we teach the minimum part of the code that you need to learn to use these tools. We are not teaching to develop a new application. We are teaching how to code to manage tools. I hope that this answers your question. Yes, thank you. Um, Professor Manant, uh, David here. Yep. 
Uh, this is really exciting. This has been a, a terrific presentation. And if there are any more questions uh, after my comment, uh, I'd encourage the audience to feel free to ask more. I just wanted to interject one comment is, as I think you probably know, the AI AIFC is very much committed to the development of the legal tech industry. It hopes and intends to be a global market leader and a very important part of this global dynamic uh, that we find ourselves in, in the midst of. It's very exciting. And hearing a bit more about your background and hearing you speak, you, I, we really hope that you will consider forming yet another entrepreneurial venture or two here at the AIFC. Um, we think this will be, uh, this will continue to be a growing robust market. And uh, we would love to have you bring your expertise and your business mindset to uh, set up shop here. So I'm not sure if you saw this announcement or not, but there is a LinkedIn um, announcement. I think it was just yesterday. And that is that uh, an AIFC advisory council on the development of legal tech was established in the AIFC with the aim of developing the legal tech ecosystem. Uh, and this is intended to improve the efficiency and quality of legal services and make them more accessible. So this new advisory body will promote the cooperation between the AIFC and international stakeholders in the legal tech field. It will provide strategic guidance and recommendations on the development of a world-class regulatory framework for legal tech. So um, we like to think we have a, a very accommodating atmosphere here. There are some unbelievably talented experts who are part of that committee and who are going to be leading this effort along with um, the uh, legal department here at the AIFC. So um, we, we hope to hear and see more of you. Tell all your friends about it and we hope you can come to Nur Sultan and visit us and meet some uh, key people who are, who are part of all of this. With that, are there any other questions from the, uh, from the audience? Okay, if no further questions. Professor, it's been an honor and a privilege having you here as our guest. Thank you so much for your time and we hope to see and hear more from you. Debbie, thank you very much. Thank you, all of you. And it's a pleasure to be talking with all of you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Professor.